Well, everybody, Cusa Grande is on its eighth iteration, and we have had a lot of fun so far. Honestly, you know, we're almost through round one, getting close to round two. If you are one of the players who hasn't played and you need to, please sign up ASAP. Also, I do know that there are some people who are watching who may have dropped out this year, and that is completely fine. I understand how things go. Uh, so, uh, you know, thank you to those who have played and to those who have been communicating with us. Just keep us up to date with what's going on in life. Usually we can work with you uh, because this is an extended time period that we have for the tournament. Without any further ado, then let's go to the game reveal. Crappy, take us on over. Yeah, don't get bopped by those weird planes. I don't even know. What a fever dream of a game. Say, speaking of fever dreams, you remember this guy? Yeah, he's been here before. He's coming on back again. The one, the only, Smite! Smite! Please smite my heart with the game. Are, are you here to win me over, Smite? Hey. Hey there. So... Yeah, you're given a game out here, and I'm excited. You know, you've got sort of your own deal when it comes to video games on Cuso Grande, and I always like to see what flavor of the month we have. Class of beer, this one's uh, fantastic. I have a lot to say about it. Okay, and by fantastic, you mean are people gonna struggle? Well, yeah, but it's a piece of history. And I think it did some cool stuff. Yeah, I honestly don't know very much about this. What what do we have for the pl for for that? I'm dying. It's my I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking a lot. What do we have? You mean which game is it? Yeah, what game do we have? What oh, what uh, what, what are here. we giving out? It's you got a long title. It's called. J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings Volume 1, and there was never a Volume 2. There was never a Volume... I just put Lord of the Rings on the layout, but, you know, the players are going to play this very long title for an hour. You know, they'll, they'll get a little bit of a taste, and it seems like chat is a bit terrified now. Uh-oh. Uh, why? What genre is this? Like, I, I don't really it's... know anything about this game. Kind of like an overhead Diablo kind of game, <laughs> I guess. O overhead Diablo type of game? Yeah, no randomization, just that sort of like hack and slash overhead find the loot genre. Okay, I mean, that's a good genre. How can you go wrong? Well, it's got five player support <laughs> for some reason. Is there any other Super Nintendo game with five player support? What? The, the list is very short. You need an accessory for that. Yeah, That's like... one of the reasons why it's so interesting. I know the multi-tap for four players. What? Like, what type of accessory allows you to play with five? What, what monstrosity can you plug into <laughs> the Super Nintendo? I, I don't think, know. Um, like, well, the Super Multi-Tap is the, the way you would plug it into player two and it would have force on it maybe uh, it's something like that oh oh yeah if the multi-tap only goes into one port uh and it allows you to play with four players through that port okay that checks out the math four plus one is five i got it okay we yeah. learned uh with that said i don't think i've ever seen anybody play four player on any gate or five player on any super nintendo game and luckily the players aren't gonna have to do that they're gonna be playing solo over the next hour here i think that we've also got a zombie for this match if our zombie is in the mood to come and chat they are welcome to do that uh otherwise we've got some fantastic people here come on we've got uh, Blue Link up in the top left, Murray in the top right. Uh, I'm going to have to look up the pronunciation for the bottom left and Escorian for the bottom right. Hi. Hey, Escorian, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I get to try a new game. I've actually never played this before. Yeah, neither have I. 
I, I hope that you have fun. Uh, I also am very curious when we get started how this is going to be tracked because uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's going to be a nightmare to track, but it might take a little more work than some games we've had in the past here. <laughs> I avoided a different game um, that is similar because it is hard to track this kind of game, but I think this one's a little more clear because there's some key items lying about here and there and there's recruitable oh, characters perfect uh yeah having items laying around having recruitable characters uh that's definitely a decent start let me go ahead and crank the tunes here Ooh, that is crispy blue link why is your audio so crispy okay uh, let me go ahead and try player two's audio. Let's see if this sounds a little less crispy. Okay, much less crispy. Very nice. Good, good. And yeah, I actually have this title screen music in my uh, playlist for Cusa Grande because it is definitely a good jam. Highly recommended. Oh my gosh. That's I'm gonna excited, be stuck in my Spike. head for a while. Why is is my brain I'm tired. Like I'm my brain's not doing the thinking. Why is it like this? There, that's better. Okay. Bam. I think I'm good to go. We'll get into the details about how progress works in the game uh, as soon as we get rolling. As for now, let me check to see if the players are good to go. I certainly am. Yeah. So, Spike. Oh, yeah. 1978's Ralph Bakshi Lord of the Rings film. I have not. No. Actually, maybe I've seen a little bit of it. Was it cartoon? Yeah, you might have seen Gandalf scaring Samwise with threat, threatening like poses and stuff. That's from this. They use the art from that movie in this game for some reason. Aw, cute. I mean, <laughs> it was uh, they ran out of funding. They had to rotoscope the animations. Eventually, it got a little weird. <laughs> I, so you got to do what you got to do. You know, you got to put a game out. Uh, actually, I uh, feel free to remove your picks okay and otherwise as soon as i see them taken down i will start our timer jk i'll start the countdown everybody we need you to spam emotes and obviously smite emotes are all welcome here what else would be good fan generic fantasy emotes Swords, bows. Okay, we are doing the countdown. Swords, bows, fantasy. All of the emotes that you have. Daggers apparently would be good. We're doing the countdown. Best of luck to the players. May they do a good Lord of the Rings here. I don't even know. I don't even know what's going to happen. But as soon as I see movement in the first area here, I will start our timer. And here we go! Ow. Okay. <laughs> Pew. Hello? Pew. Hello? Hello? Hello. Well, Smite, what do we have here? Where are we in the Shire? We are Frodo. Um, player one gets to play Frodo. This game gives XP to the killing blow, so Frodo, and especially in multiplayer, will get every single kill and will be a colossus. Uh, Sauron will be shaking in his boots when he sees Frodo walk out of the woods by the end of this, because oh, he is so strong. Honestly, I feel like Frodo, uh, by the end of Lord of the Rings, would probably uh, kick most people's butts. Let's be real here. That or <laughs> cry a bunch. It's hard to say. Like, it, <laughs> Lord of the Rings, as it turns out, is not the happiest story in the world. <laughs> well, here we are. Uh, obviously, when you have sort of an RPG-esque game, which I'm not saying this necessarily follows all RPG standards, but, you know, we have a lot going on here. Uh, and it looks like... Uh, 
Jiria in the bottom left is into the first combat area. So <laughs> what is going on in the combat here? So it's it's pretty amusing recruiting the, the two hobbits is a lot of work. And the first one is up there. And that's uh, that's the first big point of progress, I would say. Good luck, though. OK, Escorian, d did you die? Yeah, I died to the wolves. <laughs> oh, no. OK, so I think it's Pippin, maybe it's either Pippin or the other uh, uh, Mary. Yeah, the NPC said Pippin. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's Mary. Mary's a little later, but Pippin is up there. He's he wants you to, like, rescue him while he's fishing from all the wolves. And when he says that, he means all of the wolves. Frodo all has to exterminate <laughs> every single one of these things. Oh, my gosh. How many hits do they take? Uh, four looks like start. four. Okay. I guess that's not too bad, you know. But well, also, I mean, when there's four of them. Maybe... You will level up and uh, knock it down to two. Maybe Pippin could just come back home, you know? That's also an option. Oh, there we go. I was afraid to go across the plains by myself. Whatever. I don't care, Pippin. <laughs> oh, well, we are currently in the very beginning here. And essentially, uh, looking at the ref sheet here, it looks like the progress is based off of characters recruited, followed by story progress and items collected. Uh, and right now, get Pippin from the north, go to the west, go into the cave, get glasses, get Sam, and get the gate key. That is what we are currently working on. The referees for this match, by the way, are Redford, Toasty Stoat, Not Electa Baggins, and Buster Curry with Mendez as our backup referee. We actually have a real Baggins helping to track this. That's always good to hear, you know. I oh, have... I got a friend now. Oh, you got a friend? Oh, good job. It looks like, uh, does that mean that Pippins has officially been recruited? Yes, he is AI driven. You can play as him if you want, but I wouldn't really do it. <laughs> it was hard to get them to be useful even when humans were behind them. Oh no, I love it. Okay. Oh, this music is so environmental. I love it. Oh, but why does Frodo have the worst hair part I have ever seen? Like, he looks like he's wearing a wig in a video game. That's bad. That is hideous. Oh, Pippin. <laughs> Pippin looks like Sam in the movies. <laughs> I love that hair part. My gosh, Smite. Uh, yeah, I... I could never have hair like that. Ugh. That's Pippin, Ralph. Pippin, where are you going? Did you say that's Ralph? Ralph's Frodo. Ralph Bakshi's designs. Ah, okay, gotcha. Yeah. I could honestly just put this soundtrack on, like, in my home and m maybe not even realize that I, I have music playing because it's just so smooth. I really dig this. Oh, I got a new dagger. Okay, dag dagger two, a sequel to dagger. They automatically equip those into the next weakest person's slot. So that's one of the things this game is nice about. The other is when you die, it kind of just gives you the password and sends you back to pop it in there. That's nice, uh, especially if you don't have to go and enter the password. If it just automatically takes you back, uh, I really appreciate that. Yeah, hey. luckily the Super Nintendo started getting good about that. Uh, NES, not so much. <laughs> I gave everybody a map of, well, the manual gave them 16 maps, unlabeled, just labeled like map A through map I. Oh my gosh. And, uh, it took some studying to figure out even what those maps were supposed to be. They're kind of useless. I um, I labeled this one for the players because it's obviously essential. It's the Shire Caves. Yeah. It is enormous. Let me and it pop has a key this item. up here. Yeah, we do have the Sh Shire Caves here on the left side of the provided image. Let me try to uh, get a little bit zoomed in here. Okay. 
So uh, Shire Caves, we've got one, two, three, and four. What do those, are those various entrances and exits? Yeah, so the way this game handled that was as hacked in as possible. There's just an item on the floor that is consumed when you pick it up. It says, ah, entrance two. <laughs> it's just, and it's referring to the manual's map. So you're supposed to use this manual with a pen and paper, I guess, and mark as you go through it, maybe? I'm not sure. That wouldn't be too surprising. Uh, honestly, uh, by the time Super Nintendo came around, most games didn't expect you to take notes, but uh, that was definitely the case for NES, Commodore 64 uh, style games that, heck, manuals even had note sections for you to write things down. It's just, uh, yeah, by this era, it didn't happen all that much. Ooh, I'm getting crispy audio again. Drawing your own map is maybe one of the appealing parts of this game. If that is something you like, you might be doing that. And um, you might have an easier time if you do. I did tell them that the glasses are in the caves because that's, um, I don't think the game makes that super clear, but that is an essential find. So that's one of the first things we'll be doing here. Sam Wise. Very will nice. Not... He will not help his buddy until he has found them, and that's pretty rude of him, considering everything he did in the movie. Sam Wise, come on! Okay, we're gonna try Escorian's audio and see if I'm still getting crispy here. No, nope, doesn't sound crispy to me. Okay. That's all right. Ooh. Ooh. This is such good environmental sound, though. Like, I really, really dig this. That is so hard to figure out where you are on these maps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so Samwise says he has to find the old gaffer's glasses or something like that. I guess that's his name. Um, but they're not in town. They're in this cave somewhere, I guess. <laughs> it's just in here. I found a map. Map A, entrance one. I mean, yeah, like, that is helpful that we have the image in the manual. Uh, and honestly, I, I'm glad that you provided it to them because that is going to be very helpful for them. Yeah, I gave them also the next big cave, but that is pretty far in. It would be pretty impressive to see that one get explored. Yeah, you never know, though. You know, the, the, the players here... Uh, like the difference between our expectations and what players are able to do, you often, I, I have found that uh, GMs, including myself, often underestimate how the players are gonna do. But you know, you also have played this game, Smite, uh, compared sure to have. some of the other games that we've had given in Cusco Grande. Uh, yeah, have you beaten this? I beat it with five people. Um, and the multi-tap, and I was the navigator. I was the one who did all of the work. I oh. also did all the combat, but only because Frodo was who I was playing and I got all the kills, so it kind of was unstoppable and my team wasn't really that useful, but it wasn't their fault. It was because of the design. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, you can't blame people <laughs> for sucking if you have like 20 more strength than them, you know? And if you're yeah, the one breaking up all of the experience. I had a lot of fan art of Frodo with muscles, big muscles. Oh my gosh. Can anybody share buff Frodo? I I, I would love to put pictures up uh, <laughs> and absolutely give people credit because that that's very, very important here. <laughs> He really is going to be something else. This game also has a... Um, so it auto-equips weapons that you find. It gives Frodo first dibs, pretty much. Even if Aragorn, who is recruitable, he's player five. Uh, he, he's nothing compared to Frodo, even out the gate. <laughs> like, Frodo is less, so strong by that point. So it just gives them down the line the weapons. And there are weapons in this game that are so strong that they overflow the numbers and set you back around. So you'll go from like 200 strength, you pick up your new Excalibur or whatever, and you're suddenly at five strength and then you're stuck. You can't upgrade from that. It's theoretically the best weapon. So if you pick up some items in this game, late game, you're cursed. You cannot win anymore. <laughs> you're done. Oh no. 
Hey, at least Discorium found some moss. Can't equip it, but that's fine. Uh, I'm looking at the person, the main audio uh, person who worked on this, Charles Deenan, and they've worked on tons of amazing games. I mean, I'm looking at Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, Fallout Tactics, uh, Enter the Matrix. Maybe that one's not quite as good. Various Need for Speed games, uh, Icewind Dale, Planescape Torment, like... Almost everything in here is a hit. And that that that's just amazing. Like, no wonder the audio in this is so quality. Somebody said Lost Vikings. Uh, I haven't even gotten down there because there's just so much. Oh, how about Wolfenstein 3D for the uh, 3DO, you know? Clay Fighter. Okay, I'm starting to get into some more crap here. <laughs> Mario teaches typing, you know, all of the classics. Well, this game is very ambitious, especially with the multi-tap stuff. It may be the worst multi-tap experience you could possibly have, though. Because Why? not only are the players all not getting XP unless you force them to, also, they have to wait, as the chat maybe noticed. Um, there's only two players right now with Pippin, so... <laughs> Player two is ready to go. Player three, yeah, it'll be a little while. Player four is going to be like two hours of waiting. And player five, maybe seven hours of waiting around, just waiting for you to get that far in the game. Yeah. And then you're going to be a loser when you do get him. He's just weak. <laughs> He's just not strong. And there's permadeath for them, too, because when Frodo dies, you go back to town, but not the other ones. Only Frodo Thanks, matters. Huh? Is this the gem? Yeah, look at that. I found a gem already. Yeah, so the gems aren't going to be included in the progress because there's like, they're just lying around. They're keys. You need them all later, but we decided it looks like um, that they aren't really important for this because you won't get to use them, so we're not keeping them. I, I told the players that. You do have to kind of sprawl over these maps looking for them, though, which is... Uh, one, <laughs> getting lost is a big failing for this game, unless you really like drawing your own maps. It's obviously the biggest flaw. Oh, I'm so How happy. How huge is this cave? On that map, uh, it's a little... <laughs> a little bit of a illusion because there's... Squares of map can be a whole screen. So you have to you have to really mark the torches and stuff while you're walking around. I think that was the idea. Yeah. Well, honestly, like just so far, uh, I think I already get why this is on Cusa Grande uh, for a lot of reasons. Oh my gosh, the fact it's so dark wandering through these caves. You know what sometimes helps not making it this dark you know you as it turns out you can actually give characters a light or uh just oh, not worry about that oh yeah we have glasses on the bottom left very nice are glasses a key item they are samwise essentially <laughs> they are very important it's the first big one so that is enormous progress, more than most people would probably make playing this game. That's already more than most people would put up with. Finding the glasses and getting them to Samwise will get you out of Hobbiton and into the actual game. I Done love with these that. caves. Honestly, like, this match is already flo flying by. We're a quarter of the way done, 15 minutes into it. We have a decent amount, like, especially uh, with Shiria. Uh, making progress by finding the glasses. Glasses. I almost said classic. Ugh, I don't know. It's hot in here. Gosh, I'm going to open the window a little bit more. <laughs> Are you okay, bro? I'm okay. I think I'm just, like, kind of hot and hungry. Oh, hey, the glasses. Hey, Escorian also making progress. For those who don't know, by the way, we do have a zombie in this match. Essentially, we only had three players, and because of that, our fourth player is being filled in with a GM. The GM does not count towards the score, though. They are here to keep us entertained, to give us some live reactions, and, you know, help 
provide all of the depth that we want out of this match. We do try to avoid having players play multiple zombie opponents during Cusa Grande, though. So uh, those who have it a little bit easier getting into the um, one, two, or three, in later rounds, they are going to have a complete set of opponents whenever possible. Cool. Yeah, anyways, uh, Smy, I have a hard time, like, visually telling the difference between the characters here. Like, Odo is the one without the hood. Okay. Uh, they do have different sprites, and um, they all have their own inventory, which will be upgraded uh, in an automatic sort of way as you find stuff. Okay. I, I, I wish their clothes were, like, different color, you know, maybe... They if are, they... actually. They are? Uh, Pippin is the only one, I think, who's also in blue. I think the other ones are green and red. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, that would help. I think. I can't remember for sure, but I think that's the case. <laughs> it's definitely not just Hobbits, though. You do get Aragorn. You also get Gimli, I think. Uh, Legolas is automatic. He follows you around. Gandalf is there. You're going to need... So you have this... It's a really nice novelty of walking around with the whole crew. The whole fellowship is here, pretty much. Boromir decided mm -hmm. to skip out, I think. But um, it's a really... It's just one of those things about this game that's kind of neat. You're just walking around with like eight guys doing stuff. It's too bad that it actually doesn't play very well and it's very hard to succeed. Uh, like the final boss is going to be Moria. That's where this game ends. So the big old Balrog comes out and kills all of you. Uh, that's, that's, all of you yeah. will die there. Yeah, it sounds like this game had a lot of potential. But unfortunately, they missed it. They were definitely over ambitious with this one, and it is a also a PC game. I'm not sure if that's this game or if it's that similar at all. I'm not. Really, I feel like it is similar, but maybe not the same exact game. It does look like it was the same developers who made the PC game. Uh, yeah, I have no idea how that controls or functions at all. But yeah, there is a DOS version of this game. That's a little terrifying. I gotta be honest. <laughs> it might be easier to control with the mouse, actually. Yeah, the combat isn't fantastic, but because you're you're such a titan <laughs> that you can kill orcs in one swing, uh, not too big of a problem later. There oh is Gamgee recruited by Player 3. Oh my gosh, I'm actually looking at some of the art for the DOS version. This is good stuff. Like, look at this Frodo. Come on! Tell me uh, you don't want to play as Frodo here. <laughs> uh, so, I grew up with the Runkin' Bass. Uh, those are the guys who did um, those, like, Rudolph and Christmas animation movies that everyone saw, but they also did The Hobbit. And what a... actually kind of a banger. That, that movie is great. I loved it. It's got great songs and art. Uh, and then Ralph actually did... Uh, the Fellowship of the Rings, Lord of the Rings Two Towers thing um, yeah. didn't do very well. And then they handed Return of the King back to Rankin Bass and they just kind of skipped over to the end. And it was a little weird, but it was, it's still pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that's how things go. Oh my gosh. I don't know what animations. expression uh, Bilbo <laughs> is making here. This is like, look at this face. He is so scared of Gandalf. Gandalf's just like, hey there. Hey there, Frodo. Frodo's like, uh, hey, Frodo. Uh. <laughs> oh, I love the old games. They're so good. Oh, yeah, back to the classic music for Escorian. And just taking a look at the referees here, it looks like, uh, our bottom left player, Zeria Demonderg, actually has recruited Sam as well. Uh, Sam in the red, or maybe not. Sam. Sam was just hanging he will, out. He will follow on the next screen, I guess. Okay, okay. Sam will come later. Uh, meanwhile, uh, 
Murray and Blue Link have both collected Pippin. Murray did before Blue Link. Uh, Blue Link has been a little bit behind, but honestly, as soon as one of them finds glasses, that's going to be a decent amount of uh, progress there. Uh, per the note here, glasses let you see the mushroom? Is that true? Do glasses let you see mushrooms? I don't know. Um... Mushrooms are just healing on himself, so I don't know that that's even a big deal. You do get the full heal when you eat one to the whole party, so they share that mushroom. Oh my gosh. Well, and they're they a fellowship, you know, and they're small. Yeah. One mushroom for four people. For six people. I don't know. For a lot of people. The danger is near. Go south to the ferry. Okay. So right now at the bottom left, our player is trying to figure out where to go and what to do. I found a mushroom. Good. Uh, I still don't see Sam wandering around though. Maybe Sam is just being a butt. He might have died. Uh, not... Sam, for some reason, just stops following you when you enter the next areas. What? He, he just stays at the entrance there. Are you serious? It's fine. Sam. Somebody's got to guard the post. I guess. Somebody's got to be lazy and do nothing. It goes that way. Ah, so apparently we have Facet Raccoon in chat saying that I found that on emulator, Sam will always be counted as player, as second player, as long as it assumes a controller is in port two. So essentially, uh, you would have to change some very specific settings in order to make Sam be controlled by an AI. Uh, so that's pretty fantastic, Smite. <laughs> I mean, hey, he's not useful anyway, it's not a... <laughs> Not Tailbreaker. Yeah, yeah, it's like, we'll just leave Sam. Sam, you can hang out there. Escorian the Wolf. Oh my gosh. Wolf's having uh, a bad day. It's just dancing. Dancing Wolf. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> <I can live. laughs> I like the music here. Mmm. Oh, this is so good. I love this music. Like, I am all about this. Honestly, like, the visual aesthetics, the audio, like, I've got a few complaints about the cave because it doesn't really need to be that dark all the time. But there's so many aesthetic things about the game that I like. It seems like it would be kind of fun to play with other people, but I can see where the frustration of... Uh, it just would suck not being able to do anything. Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, back when I was younger in high school, there was a Lord of the Rings, I think, muck. It was just a text-based multi-user multi, -wor multi -user world that I played that was a Lord of the Rings one, and uh, that was a lot of fun to play with people. And by a lot of fun, I think most of the time I spent going into the mines and just mining ores, because that was the best way to get money. <laughs> uh, I don't really remember much else, except that I kept fall I, I fell into a cave and there was a super deadly spider that killed me. And it was in a town or something? Like, I don't remember. I don't know if any of the players tried to cross the bridge. I wasn't watching at the time, but there is a ring wraith there who will instantly kill them. Oh, no! Uh, so they are on instead the farmer quest to get around that problem and just take a boat instead of using the bridge. And once you've taken the boat... Here's the farmer. <laughs> once you've taken the boat... The ring wraith goes away, and then you have a nice shortcut, actually. Dear Farmer oh. Maggot. Yeah. What a terrible name. <laughs> Who would name their kid that? Yeah, or is that their family name? So you save his farm, and he gives you a note that lets you take the boat, but he also has the boatman's oar for some reason. 
And to get that that from him, even though you just saved his life, he wants you to do this whole quest. <laughs> so good luck. Aw, yeah. Well, honestly, uh, this, you know, what what's fascinating to me is that this is a very different genre than what we would normally have in Cusa Grande. And uh, yeah, sort of the top down adventure RPG-esque uh, game. I, I, I suppose we've had a few other games sort of similar to this. Lagoon obviously hops to mind, uh, but it's it's something that you generally wouldn't expect when you're getting into Cusa Grande, and because of that, you, you know, uh, figuring out how to adapt to a different genre is something that the players are having to do, and uh, I, I think that everybody is getting a pretty good hang of it, although uh, Zeria and Escorian probably have the best pushes so far. Although, Escorian, did you say that you've seen this game before? Have you played it? Nope, never touched it, never even heard of it before this. Ah, well, you know what? Oftentimes, uh, the GMs that we have, some of them have done very well in mystery tournaments or in Cusa Grande before. And I believe you've done pretty well yourself. It, you know, you're you're a GM these days, but you're still definitely, uh, you know, showing the chops that you've got figuring this out. <laughs> yeah, it, it helps having the maps because it's sort of. But uh, other than that, it. <laughs> The, I guess my experience comes from all the RPGs. Yeah, players who do well at this game probably are good at games like Eye of the Beholder or any of those other dungeon crawler kind of games where you have mapping issues and you have to kind of take care of it yourself before... Uh, I, I think of like Etrian Odyssey as a game where you draw your own map. Uh, it's kind of like, I think that's the skill here more than anything else. Yeah, I honestly dig those a lot. Uh... I did not give them maps of the woods here, which is where I figured they'd actually get into the game. That's the real experience they're now going through. There is no map of the woods in the manual, so. I love that. Yeah, the manual has a lot of information as well. Uh, it's got tons of lore. How long is this freaking thing? How many pages? 32, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's lengthy. Uh, by attaching the Super Nintendo mouse to your system as controller one, all game functions mentioned in the section game controls can be controlled with the mouse. You can use the Super Nintendo mouse for this game. Hmm. That's a new one for me. I had no idea. Hey, it's in the manual. That's what it told me. Uh, but yeah, there are various items listed here. The Moria key, the Elvish book, lost amulet, gate key, gold. I love that, like, the first item listed is the Moria Key, which you're not going to get for a long time. Gold, you probably get that a lot e earlier. Maybe, like, the first item that you get. There's Magic Moss. You also get that. Mushrooms. Why do you need to list Moria Key first? It's stupid. Okay, I've, I've got some complaints. I'm going to talk to whoever edited this manual. The manual's a little out of its mind with the the maps of the Barrow Downs. That's like mid game, oh and gosh. then they skipped. And and also they're like it gives you like three Barrow Downs maps, and then it gives you the Shark Caves and the Troll Caves, and then it gives you eight more Barrow Downs maps. I don't really understand. Um, there's a picture of a uh, cast of the Lord of the Rings. There's a picture of the cast. Yeah, I took one. I also have the um. Gandalf scaring Samwise image here. Ah, gotcha. Know. Those are being shared in chat. I will. Uh, <laughs> I don't go know ahead. why he did that to Sam. That's all right. It, it happens to the best of us. Uh, <laughs> so here, a beautiful picture of the entire cast. I'll go ahead and put it up on screen for you to see. They're all just partying, you know, having fun. Uh, Gollum's having a little bit of a rough day down in the bottom left, though. Yeah, the Shire Juice is a key item, uh, so that's progress. You need to trade the Shire Juice to some guy who has... Um, uh, he has... It's either the Shire Juice or something else. He he wants something, and he gives oh. you that, and then you take it to the farmer. And then He you wanted the bottle, apparently. 
Because I yeah. used it on him and he, uh... It just vanished, so... Oh, that's so... That's a bit of a fetch quest here. You have to find the farmer's enemy and trade, and then trade back with the farmer again, and then you get the ore that you need, and that... then... That's a lot of work. I don't want... I'm lazy. I don't <laughs> want to do that. Just go to Moria. Just go to the volcano. Come on. Uh-oh. I think this, um... This animation that I shared is what most people remember from... It, it was viral a little while ago of this movie and Gandalf being a jerk. Yeah, that picture is not working for me, unfortunately. Okay, I can... I can send it to you here. Aha! Yeah, send it to me. I would love it. Well, we're over halfway through, and right now, uh, they have killed a bunch of wolves and found random items all over the place, and, like, there, there's solid progress being made, but it is something special. Uh, yeah, it's taken a little while to make a lot of progress. It's Oh, come on. Let me save this. Just give me an easy time <laughs> Discord. Let me do this. A jug of honey. Yeah, the, the big battle scenes in this movie were rotoscoped. Uh, but a lot of the other ones are pretty fluid. Weird looking, but fluid animations. This is very fluid. Like, wow. A very impressive animation is what well, like especially for when this was made the 80s yeah the, the rotoscope the battle parts unfortunately are pretty boring they're just shadows of figures fighting and they're obviously just you know not animated at all really <laughs> but yeah. uh, the, the rest of it is fun well i got the ore the old man wanted honey for it so, for some reason old man wants honey Old man needs honey. Your password is... Ugh, I don't like that. There are a lot of empty spaces in that password. There's a lot of useless items I'm... that they need. Wait, can you just, like, input a letter into a space and it might give you a, an item for that specific space? I feel like that's true. Okay. I think it's very manipulatable and you could have the entire crew pretty easily. Yeah. The Horn of Gondor is in this game. I don't really think that there's a point for making a password super complicated and encrypted and stuff, you know? If, if you make it simple enough, let, why not let people experiment with your game, you know? It's, it's part of the fun, I think, is just being able to experiment with the world, you know? Of, of course, you have the quote-unquote intended way of playing it, which honestly... You've said you have some complaints about. Just let people have fun. Yeah. And fight a jug of honey and whatever. <laughs> I don't even know. The Horn of Gondor is, um, at least for me, a famous little item for this game. It is, you play it and it goes, and then it just disappears. You break it by playing it and it stuns all the orcs on screen for about three seconds. Oh, beautiful. Well, wow, pretty incredible. I want to hear the Horn of Gondor. You probably won't, <laughs> but I feel like that's in the Mines of Moria area, and that that dungeon is so big, it's probably 80% of the game. I love it. It is unbelievably large, and it was so boring. Even knowing exactly where to go with maps, navigating directly through it still took us a couple hours of just five people trying our best. <laughs> Maybe he'll. I'm not sure where to take this item. Uh, I thought it was. Take item to receptacle. Put item <laughs> in receptacle s slot. Yeah. Wait, he's gone. <laughs> Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where's the farmer? Second was... breakfast. Oh, I yeah. Hoping. I need a second breakfast. Uh, can somebody bring me second breakfast? I'm hungry. Oh, okay. I had the wrong item, Ose. 
Uh-oh. So uh, we have some people in chat talking about Barrow Downs. Is that terrifying? It is a very large dungeon, but it's split up into like 20 sections of uh, assorted maps. That's They gave you half of the maps of them in the manual. They have keys that you need later, so you have to do all of it eventually. Okay. But, uh, if the players make it that far, they could theoretically skip a lot of it and just go. Yeah. It is also a very large one. The, the Mines of Moria are just so big, though. Oh, I and believe And they make you run that... around. Actually, Smite, there was a new game that came out that uh, is about the Mines of Moria. You play as a dwarf and run around in Moria. Uh, and it's a pretty decent base building game. I've never had a base building game that like happens inside of tunnels and caves and stuff, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I feel like it is a little bit too short for what it should be. Like it, it feels like it needs more, hmm. but I'd rather have a game where I'm wanting more, you know? And that one has more than I, it might have more than five player support like this game, okay? <laughs> Ted Sandy Man, Blue Link is talking to Ted Sandy Man. It looks like right now, uh, Zeria has gotten the ore and has two characters retrieved. Mure has gotten the Shire Juice. Blue Link has the Shire Juice and has saved maggot farmer maggot okay which might put blue link a little bit ahead of murray depending but i'm not completely sure getting the ore means they have to have samwise so all the players must have all three of the first hobbits good but a samwise might have died or just is hiding somewhere <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, if you count yourself as one of the three, yeah, I believe they all uh, have done that, yeah. Samwise has the key to the front door, so they... First you rescue him and Pippin, and then you go through the door and you do the farmer's quest, and once you get the boat, then you get into actually being in the woods, and there's elves and there's tree and treants that are nasty, and there's a Tom Bombadil that's here. Oh my gosh, post farmer quest map progress most important, blah blah blah. Uh, I'm, I'm just taking a look at the ref notes to make sure that I know what is coming up. Escorian has... who? who is this dude in green? Uh, I don't know. Gildor, I think it was? Hey Gildor, how you doing? You wanna, you wanna come over to this bag? It's a mushroom. Mushrooms are pretty cool. I should be able to... Uh, apparently, Mary Brandy Book. Ah, you got Mary. Okay. So you've got both Mary and Pippin, which puts you a little bit in the lead. Of course, our zombies don't necessarily matter too much, but, you know, Mary's pretty dang cool. Yeah, and you do have Sam as well, right? Yeah, he's just hiding at the entrance. Because the player two bug. Yeah, thank you, Sam. Uh, less bug, more feature, you know. <laughs> but yeah, you have all of the hobbits, which means that you could potentially make a decent amount of progress starting now. They all have silly hats, too. I like those hats. You know, I feel like more people need to wear silly hats these days. Everybody's like, oh, I have to have a cool hat. No, wear a silly hat. Have a little spinny thing on top. Come on, be a dork. Why oh, can't we my... be dorks anymore? That's the first time I've actually seen my character run off and fight, or one of the other characters run off and fight. XP. <laughs> I really appreciate everybody here today, by the way. We have a we have a big crowd. This is much more than I'm used to. I, I really 
am having a lot of fun. Thank you all for coming and watching and just enjoying us sitting here listening to really good music and having no I like honestly <laughs> I find it funny smite having four screens up I have a hard time telling where anybody is and honestly yeah. I don't know if I care <laughs> I'm just having fun you know this is a, a, this is totally a good vibe game where we're just chilling For those who are asking for clarification about the lead right now, obviously this is a tournament. Escorian doesn't count, but would technically be in the lead, uh, having collected Mary Pippin and Sam. After that, all of the other players have collected two of the Hobbits, but I believe Zeria would be in the lead out of those. Uh, I could be a little bit mistaken, but Syria has gone across the river right now. Uh, Murray has Shire Juice. Blue Link has set sail. Uh, Radomaford is saying Zirian, Blue Link, and Murray is the order that we have here. Thank you very much. And of course, uh, our refs have been doing a lot of good work making sure that we know what the order is. Thank you so much. Yeah, without them, Smite, I'm not sure that I would be able to track... No, there's 0% chance I would have any idea what's going on here. I have a vague idea of where players are. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh... Thighs and, um the lead after Scorion, I think. I believe, yes, that is correct. And again, that's uh, that's one of the good things that we have this year. We have a lot more volunteers who are helping to make sure that we track things accurately, that we're not just getting to the end of the match and being like, well, we think we know who won. We're gonna have to go back and watch <laughs> a, a VOD a couple times. Or three times, because this is an RPG, and oh my gosh, tracking an RPG is a nightmare. Hey, it looks like Zeria actually has Mary as well. Yeah, they were right across the river, so... Well, that is a pretty good step in the right direction here. Definitely, uh definitely puts Zeria in a solid lead for the players, aside from, you know, our uh, zombie Escorian here. And with that said, like, Escorian, you, you know, you're getting your first taste of this game. What do you think of it so far? How is it going? Well, it's a little interesting. It's frustrating that your allies, well, as you can see, they're just gone and my, the one I have with me is just kind of dancing around. Oh, hey. Dance. One of them just randomly appeared. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. That sometimes happens. I mean, that's just life, right? You end up with a swarm of level one fellows at the end of this game. <laughs> Yeah, I have to ask, like, you say that it's best for just having one person level up. Is it possible to have everybody level up as you're playing, or does that just take way too much time? It's possible. It's not unreasonable. It's just if you're playing uh, alone, and I don't know who would even have a multi-tap, only Frodo is going to get the kills unless you really try hard to level the others up. It would be nice if they would, because the last boss is... um. Fierce and <laughs> ferocious, and I don't think that just winning with just Frodo is going to be an easy thing to do. That's fair. Now, I do know that my cousin, who often is in chat here, uh, Summit Summit, uh, had a multi-tap. We actually played three-player uh, Secret of Mana when I was a kid, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, highly recommended if you get a chance to play Secret of Mana with multiple people. Uh, it, it's got some bugs. We didn't experience any really when we were kids, as far as I can recall. But it, it was a good time. Definitely a fantastic way to play the game. 
Yeah, so I guess uh, if I had gone and visited, uh, my cousin is saying that, that he doesn't remember having one for the Super Nintendo. I clearly remember us playing three player uh, Secret of Mana over at your house. Yes, I do. Uh, And I remember fighting the wall boss with that. That was quite a bit of fun. And if I'm not mistaken, we did the multiplayer airplane game, uh, which I think uses different controllers. I could be mistaken though. Anyways, uh, yeah, the multi-tap wasn't super used, but there were, there were a decent number of games, uh, and actually some decent games that did use the multi-tap. This might not be one of the decent games. You know what is decent though? Blue Link has Mary. Yeah, that Cold is squad. that is definite progress there. Murray still needs to get Mary, if I'm not mistaken. That where Mary is extremely lost. Uh, you never really know uh, when it comes to a hobbit. Oh, they're so small; they could just be hiding in a tree and then hop out and be like, "Ha ha, Mary!" Ha ha. I like how all the enemies just turn into bones. I mean, what else are they going to turn into, right? I mean, or they could just disappear. Uh, the, the enemies have bones inside of them. That's that's reality, you know? If you fight a boneless enemy in real life, you need to tell me because I'm not aware of that being possible. What about a slime? In real life? I've never <laughs> fought a slime. Well, this isn't real life, though. <laughs> I mean, I guess I fought mold, you know, mildew. I, I guess there are invertebrates. I've squished a bug. Yeah. Oh, well, bye, Mary. Okay, never mind. I have fought boneless opponents. We have been, I've been proven wrong. And I do not know what happened on Zeria's screen, except there were a bunch of really bright lights floating over the area. And now it's back into the cave with ye. Uh-oh, is this the same cave, Smite? Where are we? I think it's the Barrow Downs. The Barrow Downs? Oh no, I found a key. The Barrow Downs are um, nine caves wide and they also go through the woods a bit. Not a very fun place. Yeah, that sounds like a bit of a nightmare. At least they have these giant flaming, like eternal flames all over the place. Is that convenient? Like, does do you, do you think that they have to have little, uh, like, do they, do they have people run in there and throw wood into these pits every once in a while in order to keep them going? How does it work? Magic? Magic is real in Lord of the Rings, so maybe they just cast a spell and they're like, eternal fire, <laughs> sure. Is it that trivial to make eternal fire? Oh no, the ghosts! The um, banshees or whites or whatever they are are weak to fire, I guess. But you don't have any, so you have to rely on the torches. I don't remember if you can kill them. I guess you can, but it seems like they just reappear. Yeah, I... I mean, the stabbing ghosts generally isn't a good way to kill them. I mean, that's have how you, they you, died in the first place. They've become immune to that. Have you tried stabbing one? Uh, I don't believe in ghosts. So, no, I haven't tried stabbing a ghost. Thank you for asking. I think I have performed sort of... I, I think that you could technically call it an exorcism, although a little less formal than, like, intense exorcism. Yeah, I don't know. I was Mormon when I was young. <laughs> uh, yeah, I live a very different life now. I changed class, okay? No longer Mormon class. I'm now gay class. That's just life. 
There's Tom Bombadil. All right. Tom. I think this is optional. Tommy Bombadil. My friends got Aiden. Yeah, you read a letter from the evil tree, and so he ate the entire crew. And so you need Tom Bombadil's optional help, because I think Frodo could just go without them. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, but you know the. The whole thing is about your crew. You're getting a, your crew together so that y'all can hang, go, you know, throw something in the volcano. It's fun. I mean, did, did the other three hobbits really do anything? Let me check my nose. Oh, my. Looks like you need those guys. Okay, one of them was dead anyways. <laughs> okay... Zeria back outside. You're gonna get a sunburn here. The sun's so bright. There's a lot of keys and doors to unlock in the barrows, so you have to explore the caves to get the key to the next area, but they are really zooming along through here. Yeah, they're doing a fantastic job. I'm... The manual's maps are not very useful for this, even though they gave you the maps of the Barrow Downs. Um, it's still going to be probably what most people dislike in this game the most. Until they get to Moria, no one would forget that place. Yeah, I have to say, though, the quality of the music just surpasses everything else. And, like, I could almost just be looking at, like, really... Like, very, very zoomed in, awkward pictures of people from the 80s. But with this music, it would, I would be like, that was the best video I've ever seen. Okay. Without the music, I'd be like, I never want to watch that again. No. What the crap? Why am I watching this video? But slap this on. Bam. I'm sold. Escorian, no. Now the music stopped. I'm in the Barrow Downs. Fine. I well, I believe that Escorian is technically in second at this play or at this point because uh, Zeria did make it to the Barrow Downs before you. You're a zombie. It doesn't matter. But I like <laughs> to point out that we have one player doing better than a zombie. Did they get have their friends eaten too? They uh, decided to leave them in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they abandoned their friends. Nice. Honestly, They're still alive. They're fine. when it comes just... to Cuso Grande, sometimes you need to abandon your friends, you know? Oh, you're saying they're... Well, yeah, the tree is more store. It's friend storage. Trees are friend storage. Fact. Go back and get them after you destroy the ring. Who needs them? I mean, they can't get hurt while they're in there. They might get hungry. Did you leave mushrooms with them? Uh, there's probably mushrooms growing inside the tree. Yeah, that's good. I'm not going to worry about them. Wait. Okay, chat was pointing out that essentially what I said was a Utah fact, but apparently we already had a Utah fact about trees. The, 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 we, uh, yeah, we learn a lot about trees here. We don't have much else to do here in Utah. We learn about trees, kind of dig dirt, you know. Learn about trees digging dirt. That's the Utah way. Come to Utah, dig trees, live in dirt. No, the other way around. Live in trees, dig dirt. Yeah. This dripping, like, okay, I miss the music, but it's fine. You don't have to go back <laughs> and scoring. You can keep playing the game. I just miss it. When I navigated this, we um, we got all the way through it. And then offline, I went back in to go get some missing keys. It was so annoying. Oh, what the? There are keys just lying in the woods or elves have them or things like that. And you have to get them all 
later on to open up the um, final areas. Yeah. Do, do, do. I'm so sad for the wolves. Like, they're just trying to live their best lives, eat hobbits, but you won't let them. Like, <laughs> like honestly, it's it would, just knowing how Middle Earth is doing, it would probably be better if all of the sentient beings died. Like, seriously, a lot less war, okay? Then there get to be wolves running around, and that's cool. And the trees, well, no, the some of the trees would be dead, but others would be fine. They just grow, you know, nature returns to what nature was. You don't have to deal with stupid ring drama. <laughs> oh, I really, 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 I don't have no idea what I'm going to say because it's I just have a picture for you. It's at that point you have a picture for me. Yes. I do see what you mean, Smite, by Frodo being the only useful character. That is the theme of this image. I'm ready. I'm ready. Where is it? Discord. Oh, Discord. Aha! Is it Swoldo? Oh, he is beefy. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We're we're sharing I need to share Frodo with y'all. Okay, and as far as I can tell, this was made by Crab Meats. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Crab Meats, for contributing to Smite's Lord of the Rings lore. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> it is pretty dang perfect and pretty representative of Lord of the Rings in general, you know? They're all, they're all silly. They're just silly little guys running around trying to help you. You know, and I, I don't fault them for being silly. They're just kind of dorks. It, does anything bad happen if they die? I don't think anything except for Frodo's life matters in this game. So they're just silly little guys. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Balrog definitely, I mean, it wiped us out like 10 times, but when we finally won, it was pretty much just like Frodo and maybe Pippin <laughs> made it through. <laughs> Drip, drip, drip. Uh, Here, have some music. Yay, a little bit. Just as a treat. <laughs> Literally just a little bit, it's put me. Okay, you got an amulet. And back to the drip it drops. Ugh. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. It's supposed to be atmospheric. And I'm not offended, <laughs> but I also think of all of the video games where drips of water hurt you. It's stupid. I'm glad that that's not the case in the Lord of the Rings, uh, because if it were, it's not lore correct, you know? Frodo uh, had plenty of drippy drops hit his face. Did he die? No. No, well, he, he kept going. <laughs> <laughs> the players did an incredible job. The Barrow Downs, unfortunately, is probably an hour long. So having gotten a, a couple screens in, Zaya's so doing great. They're like they're like a fourth of the way through it, honestly. That's honestly huge. Yeah, everybody, I honestly, like, just watching the game, I could not tell you that anybody made progress, but Smite <laughs> and the referees have confirmed that progress has been made, and that is time. Throw your hands up in the air, throw your Tims into chat, just celebrate. It, it's been a good time here. Well, as it turns out, our winner today is... Uh, you've been saying Zai, it might be Zai, it might be Zyria, either way, our bottom left player takes the victory from what I can see. After that, it appears that Blue Lean took second, Mure third, and Escorian is a zombie. Uh, and thus does not matter when it comes to this game. I'm gonna go ahead and invite Zai to come and chat. Yeah, 
Uh, how do you feel about how they did? Uh, you you were a little bit surprised, I think, by Zeria. Uh, the other players, did they get about as far as you would expect here? We didn't know that they would get past the farmer, honestly. That's a lot of work, and they all seem to have cleared that. Wait, wait, wait. So, all of them made more progress than you were, like, hoping? That's really cool. That's great to hear. Yeah, I'm, I really enjoyed watching this. Even if, like, the game's not the most exciting watch, the, like, the overall environment and atmosphere of the game, I can't fault. I absolutely loved it. With that said, we have our victor here. I do not know how to pronounce your name, though. Uh, mm. Zeria. 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 <laughs> I, I've been saying it mostly right. Yes, Zeria. Yeah. <laughs> welcome and congratulations. You were the only of the players to make it to the Barrow Downs. All uh, right. And I, I got to that point and I was like, I've either way ahead or completely off track and I'm not sure which. <laughs> I love that. That's about right here. So let me uh, let me ask you, how do you feel about this game in general? <laughs> Um, so there's definitely some, like, janky parts of it, but honestly, like, if I had played this as a kid, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, and if I had played this as a kid, I probably would have liked it enough to, like, go hunt down strategy guides and stuff to play it. Really? I love yeah. that. <laughs> and honestly, I kind of... I, I don't know if I would have felt that way uh, as a kid, but definitely as an adult. I'm like, this yeah. This has a pacing that I really dig. Uh, apparently, like, uh, you know, uh, Smite did play this uh, multiplayer with five people, and unfortunately, everybody ends up pretty much useless, except for Frodo. Yeah, well, uh, that's, that's really funny, because I was like, at one point, I think, Sam got eaten by wolves, and then I lost Mary and Pippin <laughs> the tree and i'm like i guess i don't need them <laughs> that was That's hilarious true. we we were talking about it because uh escorian actually got their friends back thank you escorian for rescuing mary and pippin even as a <laughs> um, zombie you don't have to miriam actually died legitimately so <laughs> oh no well i mean that's fair uh, yeah, with that said, but, uh, yeah, we were just kept progressing, so I was like, I guess I don't need them. I thought it was pretty funny that you just like went to the Barrow Downs. <laughs> Technically, I don't know if you would have been able to beat it without rescuing them. Smite, do you happen yeah. to know? You might need them to impress Aragorn later. I'm not sure. Um, Aragorn is not impressed. Them. You abandoned <laughs> your friends. I have no idea if that's me. Right. He's right next to the tree, so if it is, well, enjoy your walk back, I guess. <laughs> that's uh, but, great. Yeah, that's uh, it, that. That was kind of my my philosophy. Was I lost them, and I was like, well, until the game tells me that I need to go back and get them somehow, I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah, that's think that's they, a good um, strat. You might need them just to distract the Balrog. While he's eating them, Frodo can stab it. That's probably okay. why they're necessary. Well, I'm glad I didn't get to the Balrog. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm also glad. Well, I mean, if you did, you would have uh, potentially beaten the game because isn't that the end of the game? Yes. Oh. Uh, if you made it that far, the notes I gave you would include maps of swords you shouldn't pick up because you can't win anymore if you pick them up. Why? <laughs> yeah, I was... I was very concerned when we got this game, and it was like, I'm going to give you the manual and some maps. And I was like, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the manual does have the maps, but it's confusing enough that I think, like, the additional gift from Smite, so that yes, you weren't too confused. Generous. It was very helpful, yes. Yes. Yeah, what were the biggest flaws, do you think? Because this is Cusa Grande. I actually think that the game belongs yeah. here, despite I like mean, everything the charming that I loved about it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, with without those maps, without having the the manual, and it it definitely has a. Uh, it's hard to figure out where to go at times. Like you have to talk to people to get those hints, and I'm a big like I said, I'm a big nerd. I'm a big RPG fan, so I. I kind of went in with that philosophy as well of like, let me talk to people, see what they can tell me. Um, 
but it is confusing. Um, not having a map of any kind would make any of these cave sections awful. Oh yeah, for sure. Even like the forest part that I was in, I was starting to get a little confused. I don't know if that transferred over onto me playing, but there were times where I was like going back and forth unnecessarily. <laughs> I mean, I honestly had no idea where anybody was pretty much the entire time. So, yeah, I'd say that that came through perfectly. <laughs> yeah, but they and, the, and the combat that. is definitely a little a little weird, but I think <laughs> I kind of got the hang of that pretty quickly. Uh, but the hitboxes are not good. <laughs> OK, yeah, yes. they never changed anything with that. At the same time, I love how ambitious this game is, despite being highly flawed. It was absolutely charming. I definitely enjoyed it. So, Zeria, I gotta ask, are you streaming anything these days over at your own channel? No, this is kind of... I dipped my toe into Kuso Grande for the first time at Kuso Live at oh, yeah. this year. Um, and this has been... like I don't really do a lot of streaming. I don't really do a lot of speedrunning, so this is kind of me my first foray into the world of uh you know speed running as an actual runner sort of yeah <laughs> yeah blind races are definitely a little bit of a different approach uh i i personally am a fan partly because you know there's less practice but at the same time you know, there there are certain skills that uh various people have and when you get an unusual genre like lord of the rings uh, you, you'd never really know what you're gonna get. For you to, you know, uh, <laughs> in your first online tournament, take first, seriously, great job. That uh, was yeah, a I lot of fun. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody did pretty well, though. As Smite was saying, uh, Smite didn't expect anybody to get past the farmer, and everybody did. So, honestly, okay. it was a very strong group of players, and you managed to come out on top, so congratulations. Oh, thank you, thank you. Cool. Well, uh, thank you so much. And uh, Escorian and Smite, thank you both as well. I have to ask, uh, especially Smite, if you have anything that you'd like to plug, anything that's coming up. I, I believe you've got Arcade Pit later tonight. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what time is that usually? 8 p.m., so in two hours. Okay, in two Eastern. hours. Well, we've got one more Kusagrani match, and then uh, we will have a break, so people can always shuffle over there. Escorian, anything that you need to bring up? Oh, uh, no, I'm taking a break from streaming due to some issues. That's completely fine. Well, all right, thank you all so much. I'll let you go, and we need to boogie on over to the, the final match of the day. All right, thank you. All right, take care, friends. Bye. Bye.